some lovely pelicans. You can always see pelicans on the coast in Victoria. Most parts of Australia you can see pelicans. We can get pretty close to them. Sadly, down here on the beach today, there is a bird uh, that swallowed a hook and got the sinker hanging out of his mouth. So um, we're all pretty concerned. Everybody along here is concerned. The problem is if you try to grab that bird, uh, the hook could be down in its gullet. There's not much you can do. You might just stress it. So we've all contacted whatever wildlife um, rescue services we can and they promise that they will come out as soon as they can. Um, it would be nice if they turned up immediately, but obviously they might not even be in the area. They could be answering other calls. So hopefully sometime today they will come out. Look at this pelican. All out of wood. They're all carved out of tree stumps. So this one here is an otter. And now is it a sea lion? That's a sea lion. There's actually one down here that's carved in situ. So they've actually taken an old dying tree and they've carved this fantastic uh, piece of artwork. I'll show you in a moment when we get down here. So you can see it's actually a tree stump You've got the fisherman up there pulling in the catch. See the, the fish on the side, on the edge here, on the other side. Got this great big pelican, Brandon Croon. Only in 2016. They do a lot of this in Australia where they'll take old tree stumps and do carvings. I really, I really think it's quite beautiful. There's one, um, nearer to where we used to live that was done like a totem pole. I haven't got any pictures to share with you but you can imagine they carved it out because it had a, a tall uh, tree stump and they've done it like a totem pole. It's really nice artwork, it feels relevant because the tree has of course died. Um, they don't do it with uh, live healthy trees. Here's another thing you'll see throughout Australia. Outdoor barbecue pit areas. They're kept really clean um, and you can come out here and use these for free. So once you actually light them, and they're generally gas, some of them are electric, once you light them it'll stay on for say 20 minutes, 30 minutes. You do your snags or your prawns or any of the cats you've got from the sea here, the fats run down into the center and somebody from the local council will come along every day and clean these units up. It's a really big part of Australian life, these outdoor barbecue areas. They're in almost every suburb in Australia. If you ever come to Australia, or if you're in Australia and you're not using these, but if you ever come to Australia, you really are going to enjoy the outdoor free cooking facilities all over the place. Now you might wonder, why have I got a thick sweater on? Um, it is getting a bit warm actually and it's coming off very soon but when we set off this morning it was pretty chilly. It still is springtime here in Melbourne and the weather uh, can't make its mind up. It's not quite getting into summer yet uh, although seeing the weather today it's too warm for this top. So here we've got nice cafes along the waterfront. The young kids that I met earlier on are just coming back from a fish and chip shop. So I've taken the top off way too hot. I love all these little cottages along the estuary that runs out to the ocean here. Um, they're generally not homes anymore. This one's a little museum. It's very pretty. Now next door, having said that, is actually a home. And right opposite, you've got uh, a place where the boats can come in and go straight out to the ocean. <laughs> So just off the beachfront, there's a nice ice cream parlour there, 40 different flavours. Uh, a fish and chip shop just here. Unfortunately, there's a lot of roadworks going on. So we're not probably going to get the very best of Turin because of all the noise. But I've been told the fish and chip shop over the road does great chips. So we might just go over there and get a portion of chips. Animal laundry. So, you know my opinion, they've got a butcher's, always love to see a butcher's, because right next to the butcher's, 
are these guys. I'm going to cross over. Might be a little quieter on the other side. Okay, there's a whole shopping precinct over here as well. Whoops. Got to get over. So it looks to me like there's a bit of a shopping mall just over here. This is quite a, a busy main road going through Torridon. Here we go, crossing over the green man. Now there, obviously there wouldn't normally be all the noise of construction here, but there is the main road that runs through this little town. Um, and a lot of people may just drive through here on the way back to Melbourne or out to the peninsula here. But I think this is well worth the stop. This is a nice little small coastal town. I just wish I knew how to pronounce it. From this side, the diner. Pink Ladies Diner. Well, there's heaps of places. I'm not even sure if it's a sort of an original fish and chip shop up here. You can always tell a fish and chip shop by just getting the chips. So here they are. G'day, how are you? <laughs> Turden, the original fish and chip shop. Built in 1990. So we just met Bill from Kuirup, which is close to where we're staying. And he was saying um, a little bit about the area, recommending some places we might go and see. So watch this space, see whether see whether we get down to Kuirup. We've only got about another week in the area, so um, we'll see. Thank you, Bill. What's, what's your name? I'm Jacob, and I live around here. You do, Jacob, do you? Yes, I'm a local, 15 years running. Oh, all right. So, um, what's the popular flavours? What do people go for? Well, obviously, cookies and cream is your classic that everyone loves. All right. And then the kids, the big colourful ones, rainbow and bubblegum. Thanks, Jacob. Yeah. We've just been over to the chippy over the road. It's a nice little chip shop there, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Another common one amongst adults is Irish cream or Old English coffee. Like Irish cream, like a Bailey's sort of pun? It's a Bailey's sort of Irish cream? Um, similar, yeah, yeah. Do you want to try anything, Michelle? <laughs> Maybe I'll try the awesome toffee one you said. Yeah, the Old English toffee. Old English toffee. It's a really good one. Good toffee ice cream toffee. So, what, what is this one? So that's Old English toffee. It's Old um, vanilla oh. and toffee ice cream. Right. Apparently there's no restriction on taste in here, so you could go through and try every one, which we're not going to do, otherwise we won't eat our chips. Mm. It's almost like some salted caramel, isn't it? It's kind of, kind of cool. What do you think? That toffee ice cream is really nice. English, English toffee ice cream. Turidan, it's a really nice little town. There's a bit of roadworks going on at the moment, and I think there's now a bypass, um, so there's not as much traffic as there used to be, but I'd certainly recommend coming down here. They've currently got 30 different varieties of ice cream. So come the summertime, apparently they have 40 varieties of ice cream. So imagine, not a place where I'd go to lose weight. So we're here, there's the estuary. So we've got some chips from the fish and chip shop, the original fish and chip shop. And I'm going to tell you now whether or not they come up to my standard. I always tend to get the chips first from a fish and chip shop. If the chips come up to standard, and I mark them by not being frozen chips but being real potatoes. Let's see. But it's looking promising. They certainly don't look like frozen chips. Wow. Thumbs up for the French fries or chips as we call them. They're made with proper potatoes. Not just frozen chips that have been heated in oil. They taste really good. So we enjoyed the chips, they were really good. 
It's a really nice town. But we decided to go back. The, the guys in the ice cream shop said the bakery, which I think is part of the same company or the same family, uh, has really good cakes. So we'll either get a cake, something to take back with us, or we might relent and actually go for ice cream. That's brilliant. I have like, my bedside table and novels. Cook books out by the house. How long have you had this place? 24 years. I've got my daughters working here now. Nice. Well, well done. Now we're business. Then we should get a slice and take it home for you tonight. Yeah. I reckon. That's what we're going to do. Okay. We we'll go for both. <laughs> you. You've twisted me arm. <laughs> Elisa, you've got your prices up as well, which is really unusual. Just so you know, I feel it's better. That looks good to us. To me, that is a real plus. You can come in, you can kind of, A lot of places don't do it. Do you think the price tags look tacky? No, I think they look fantastic. I think that, no, don't ever get rid of those. Yeah? So we've made up our mind. We're actually going to go for ice cream and slices. I'm not going to have slices now. We'll have them when we go back. Look at the raspberry tarts. Just simple lemon and raspberry tarts. I love them. So Elisa's apologising to me for not having a full setup here. But I can tell you, I've not seen a, a bakery with so much delicious stuff in for a long time. And uh, we're smitten by it. Uh, Turidin Bakery. You've got to come over here, got to try it. If you're anywhere in Melbourne, get over here. Trust me, you're in for a, uh, a real treat. So you've got two jam, Florentine, that chocolate Oreo, coffee eclair, and your caramel slice. Beautiful, thank you. Wow. Now got to go for ice cream as well. <laughs> oh wow! You're in trouble. Now I've had cakes galore, <laughs> and she wants to come back for ice cream. But I think we're going to because we bought so many cakes. I think we're going to share an ice cream. Um, a waffle, please, if you can. Thank you very much. I'm going to have that one, Michelle. So what are you going to have? I've got a beaver stuff. Salted caramel. No, rock salt caramel. Rock salt caramel ice cream. Michelle's got English toffee. It's an old English toffee ice cream. So so good. And in our other hand, <laughs> we've got the biggest selection of cakes from one of the best bakeries. What's it actually called? Torridon Tur 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 Bakery. Um, if you're ever near Torridon Bakery or the Torridon Ice Cream Store, 40 different flavours. They're next door to each other, so it's pretty handy. Same family, but Elisa, the, the girl that runs it and owns it, what, a, what an absolute uh, gem. 24 years. Yeah. 24 years, passionate about her cakes and her ice cream. Mm -hmm. And if you think you lot are getting any, got another thing coming. Torridon? Torridon. Torridon. 